Fives is genuinely one of the most tragic characters in all of Star Wars, and because of that, he's going on to S tier. Real men cried. That's right, boys. Today we're ranking every single character death in Star Wars on this tier list. We have six tiers. S, real men cried. A, sad. B, meh. Take it or leave it. C, uh, okay. D, couldn't care less. And F, I'm glad they're gone. Not too many characters in F, but there's gonna be a few. There's gonna be a few, and <laughs> actually, <laughs> honestly, Luke Skywalker right here, I'm highly considering putting an F. I, I don't think I can just because Luke Skywalker is too legendary of a character, but the way they treated Luke was despicable. And his death was an absolute butchery of how it should have been. I'm gonna put him in D. Making him fade away on that island after fighting Kylo Ren in a duel from across the galaxy in this phantom fight was absolutely abhorrent. I freaking hated it. I wanted to punch my screen after I watched it. I was, was gearing up for some boxing. But I can't put Luke Skywalker in F. I'm glad they're gone. And I'm not glad he's gone. I, I wish we'd gotten more of him so that he could redeem himself. Because The Last Jedi, again, absolutely made a mockery of him. So he's going in D. Couldn't care less. Um, next up, we have Emperor Palpatine. And this looks like Return of the Jedi Palpatine. Because I think, yeah, later on we have Sequels Palpatine. And I'll put him right next to him just so we can get that out of the way real quick. Um, Return of the Jedi Palpatine. I'm going to put... Okay, here's what's interesting. Because I'm not sad he's gone, but they treated him with respect, and his death made sense in the universe. So I'm going to put him in A. Not that it's sad that the most evil man to ever live in the galaxy was gone, but more that, you know, it's sad that he died. <laughs> I can't even defend this. You know what I mean. It's an A-tier death. Sad is the wrong word to describe it, but the death itself is A-tier. I, I think you understand. And on a similar note, Rise of Skywalker Palpatine gets a couldn't care less death because he was shoehorned in out of the middle of bum frick nowhere in order to make Rey have some final villain. So he's going in couldn't care less. I feel like just a little bit of a warning. I think a lot of sequel characters are going to go in couldn't care less. Next up is Darth Vader and Darth Vader is an S tier death. The Darth Vader is actually a tragedy. Real men should have cried here because Darth Vader came back to the light. Anakin Skywalker was redeemed. Luke Skywalker saved his father and that was an S tier death. I think everyone knows that. I'm sure tears were shed in theaters across the world when this premiered in 1983, so. Actually, let me call my dad. Let me ask him what he thought. He was in theaters in 1983 when this came out. It's one of his favorite Star Wars movies. As you know, if you've watched this channel before, that's right. We're going to talk to Dadward. He's going he's gonna to cameo yet again for another another time. He's coming back. Let's hope he picks up, though. Hey, I'm filming a video, and I was just wondering, what, what was it like in 1983 when Darth Vader died? Like, was it like a good ending, or did it feel weird? Uh, no, it was a good ending. I think it was a little bit, you get a little torn. I mean, it's his, turns out it's his father. There's a lot of drama. In the end, Luke never gave up on him, on his dad. Preach. So you're like, man, yeah, he's spitting a lot facts. Of planets, killed people everywhere, and did a lot of damage to the galaxy. But in the end, he kind of, you know, wanted to be a good dad. So you, you had a weird, <laughs> that, was a weird that was the side part that you wanted to be a good dad. <laughs> You felt bad, but at the end, you're like, hey, sorry about that. I made a mistake. I shouldn't have just tried to destroy the galaxy, and uh, I just want to be your dad, Luke. Um, right, right. Okay, all right. Just wanted to get your input on that. All right, thank you. All right. All right. Well, that's, uh, that is certainly first-hand knowledge. He was quite a yapper. I did not see that one coming, but uh, anyway, on to Cad Bane, and Cad Bane is oh, freaking Cad Bane. I love Cad Bane. Cad Bane is genuinely one of my favorite bounty hunters in the galaxy. I love him in Clone Wars. I think he's better than Boba Fett because Book of Boba Fett ruined Boba Fett. And I'm going to put Cad Bane, unfortunately, much to my heart's despair, in C tier. Couldn't care less because they shoehorned him in the end of Book of Boba Fett for no reason. They were like, oh, Boba needs a bad guy. Here's how the meeting probably went down in the Disney executive studio room. We got to do something cool for the end of Boba Fett. We got we to gotta do something cool for the end of this epic TV show. We got to do something really sick so that people remember it. Dang, I'm looking huge. Any, any, sorry, any. We got to do something really cool. What if we bring in this random bounty hunter that Boba Fett has interacted with maybe, maybe three times and maybe a couple times in comics and have Boba Fett kill him? And simultaneously, we put an end to one of the best bounty hunters in the galaxy at the same time. Two words with one stone. Guys, we're geniuses. We rule the world. They did not rule the world, in fact. That freaking sucked. I freaking hated it. C tier, couldn't care less. I wish I cared. I wish I could care about Boba Fett, but I can't. Or, sorry, Cad Bane, but I can't. Supreme Leader Snoke. <laughs> I'm freaking glad Snoke's gone. The way he went out, he could have been a cool villain, but if you're going to take him out that easy, I'm glad he's gone. If you're not going to develop him, if you're not going to make him a big bad villain for the entire trilogy, <laughs> get him out of here. I'm freaking glad he's gone. I'm noticing a trend with the characters that are in the bottom tiers. They seem to all be from the sequels. At least their deaths were. So, uh, wonder how that's going to play out for the rest of the video. Let's, uh, let's see. Next up, oh, we got the subscribe button, which is going in Real Men Cried. And you want to know why it's going in Real Men Cried? Because I'm crying, guys. 
boys i have tears going down my cheeks as we speak 92 percent of you are not subscribed why the heck like why not you watch my videos every week you come and click the jerry video and you can't wait and you clap your hands like this in a little excited ways i know you're liking the videos just subscribe it helps me out it helps you out it helps the channel out thank you very much and now we're going on to han solo <sighs> han solo is a uh, uh okay because i cared a little bit in theaters when i was nine watching the force awakens I cared a little bit. There was a little bit of empathy in my heart. But looking back on it as a mature mature lad in this day and age, I'm like, that's how you that's how Han Solo went out? That's how you killed him? His own son killed him when he wasn't expecting it? What a terrible ending for one of the most legendary characters in cinema. Honestly. Honestly deplorable. And I know and and I know the comments are gonna be like this. Uh Jedward, you don't understand. Harrison Ford wanted to die. Okay, I don't freaking care what Harrison Ford has wanted to die since Empire Strikes Back. The reason that Empire Strikes Back ends on that unfinal note of Han Solo being frozen in carbonite is because George Lucas was praying to his god because he's like a Buddhist. He was okay, so he was praying to Nirvana. He was praying to Nirvana that Harrison Ford would come back and return to the Jedi because he wasn't sure. Harrison Ford did not want to come back that much. He was not that excited for the next Star Wars movie. Harrison Ford's been asking to go since Empire and he finally got his wish in Force Awakens, but they did not do it very well. <sighs> regrettable, regrettable, but let's move on to Admiral Holdo. <laughs> I'm freaking glad Admiral Holdo's gone. Frick her, honestly. One of those characters that you're like, oh, thank goodness she's gone. She was so annoying. What an awful leader. I was happy when she was gone. Why would you not tell anyone your plan to save their lives? Why is it so important that you keep this a secret? There's no reason to keep it a secret. Don't make them think you're some agent on the inside trying to kill them all. Captain Phasma, man, we're just having like a string of sequel characters here. Holy cow, I promise you're getting to some other characters later on in the list. Plo Koon, Eeth Koth, or sorry, Agent Kohler, they look kind of the same. Uh, Heavy, we're getting there, we're getting there, just stick with me. Captain Phasma, man, Phasma could have been a cool villain if they developed her a little bit more, but um, they kind of made her a random villain that Finn fought and killed. I'm going to put her in couldn't care less, because, you know, I'm not glad she's gone. She had potential, but I don't really care that she's gone. I didn't feel anything when she died. It's just The fight between her and Finn was merely an excuse on the part of the writers. Kylo Ren. Kylo Ren was, uh, okay. He was still bad, don't get me wrong. Like, he was still, his character arc was so wishy-washy and flip-floppy. Is he good? Is he bad? No one knows. No one knows. <laughs> That's just how life is now. <laughs> I thought the death could have been way better, but as it was, it, it was all right. It was all right. I'm putting, him on, I'm putting him on C. I'm leaving him there. General Hux. General Hux, again, General Hux had real potential. He was a scary villain in Force Awakens, and everyone's seen his, uh, his infamous speech, except the German version. <laughs> anyway, I think I'm gonna put him a fat C tier too, because he had a real potential, and I was hoping that he, his potential would be pulled. Actually, you know what? No, he, I, there was there was no hope. As soon as he said, "I'm the spy," boo, boo, we don't like that. I instantly knew it was going down the drain. I, I almost, there was just no hope left for him. There was no hope at all. Princess Leia. Princess Leia was an A sad. Princess Leia was one of the characters who was treated well in the sequels. I'll say that. I liked her arc, except for her flying in the space thing and her Jedi, but for the most part, she was where she should have been, leading the resistance against the First Order. That makes sense. And when she died, it actually fit into the plot decently well. It didn't really make sense why she died, because she was perfectly healthy, standing around directing re resistance troopers in Telvin, but I think it was sad. I think that it was well done, better than most of the sequel deaths, and I'm gonna leave her in A. Next to, man, look at the contrast between these two phases. <laughs> Oof, yeesh, that's not looking too good. Qui-Gon Jinn. Real men cried. Qui-Gon Jinn had such potential. Everyone loves Qui-Gon Jinn. A lot of people, he's their favorite Jedi of a lot of people. And I wish we got more of him. I really do. I think we could have had a great arc of him as a main character if he hadn't died. But at the same time, he needed to die. I just learned this. But the reason that the Duel of the Fates music is called Duel of the Fates is because there's two fates. If Qui-Gon dies, then Obi-Wan trains Anakin and he goes to the dark side. Because Obi-Wan's not equipped to in the long term. If Obi-Wan dies and Qui-Gon trains Anakin, Anakin has a much better path and a much better chance at success. That's why it's called Duel of the Fates. A little fun fact for you Star Wars heads. I'm sure, I'm sure all of you knew that. Let me know in the comments if you did. Actually, speaking of the comments, I wanted to try something in this video. However many views this video gets, let's try to have double as many comments. So if this video has like, I don't know, 2,000 views, let's try to have 4,000 comments. And that might require, look, I'm asking you boys to be brave. That might require some of you to comment three or four times, just random things. Just type your keyboard like this. That might require it, but I think you should try. I think we should go for it. We should give it a shot. And then, I don't know, let's see. It's February 4th as I'm filming this. Two weeks from now, I'll see how accurate we are. I'll make a community post talking about how close we got to the double comments ratio. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. <laughs> and uh, let's go on to Yaddle. Yaddle had a B mad death because Matt, Yaddle as a character was not developed enough for us to really care about her. Does that make sense? I think that makes sense. If Yaddle had been a really big character in Star Wars, we would have cared a little bit more. 
As it was, she was only in a couple episodes of Tales of the Jedi. And obviously she was cameoed in Phantom Menace or whatever, but her only time she ever spoke was Tales of the Jedi. It was sad because you knew that she was trying to do the right thing, but then Dooku absolutely smoked her in that duel. Oh, and I forgot, she, okay, actually I might, I'm not gonna move her up. I almost moved her up because you have that fake out where you think she died and she emerges like this. She's like this and she's lifting, using the force to lift it up and you're watching it and you're like, that's so freaking sick. But then she like collapses in absolute exhaustion and Dooku comes over and just like, Dooku walks on over and pretends his lightsaber is blue. He's like, <sighs> and it's sick. So that's why Yaddle's B tier. She died at Dooku's hand. And uh, speaking of Dooku, where the frick is Count Dooku? Boys, we have a crime on our hands. There's a Jedward tier list about character deaths, and Count Dooku is not on it. I'm remedying this right. Remedying, remedying. I'm remedying this right now. Just give me two seconds. Count Dooku, my name is. The Jedi Order's rule too long, it's time to run to- Alright, all is right with the world, Count Dooku's on this list. <laughs> and believe me, I'm putting him S tier. I shed real tears when Count Dooku died. Not actually, I'm a tough man. But, <laughs> but Count Dooku is an S tier, a real man cried. He really was. <sighs> a man after my own heart. But anyway, now we're on to Zam Wessel. Zam Wessel- <laughs> Zam Wessel's like couldn't care less. She was such a side character. Just a, just an, a means to an end. Jango Fett hired her. And speaking of Jango Fett, Jango Fett is a uh, uh, okay because he wasn't a big enough character for me to really be sad he died, but it was he was cool enough where I was like, oh, I kind of wanted to see more of him. But yeah, uh, okay, C tier. Uh, next up we have this guy, the one and only this guy, and actually, boys, I have learned his name since the last video where I believe ranking every Star Wars character. I have learned his name is I'm a Gundy, I'm a Gunda, I I'm a Gundy, I'm a Gundy. That's the name. And the reason he's named that is because Dave Filoni thought it was funny because his entire purpose in Star Wars is to die. However, you might be asking, Jared, Jared, you rogue, rebellious rap scallion, you. Why would you put him S, Real Men Cried, if he's only in one episode of The Clone Wars and barely has a name? Basically, Amagundi has a very emotional final moment to us men. 92% uh, men, I'm speaking to you now, 8% women on my channel. Thank you for being here, love you to death. I'm not sure if you'll get it. Basically, every man has a vision of having a final stand with the enemies approaching him on all sides and he knows he's gonna die but he ignites the lightsaber and faces them down anyway actually you know what i i explained it so well in my um ranking every star wars character video i'm just gonna cut that clip and put it in here plus i put one from metallica over it in the editing software and i think it sounds so freaking cool so just uh, roll that clip roll that clip all of us guys out there have had daydreams and visions of us in a, in a valley like that waves and waves of the enemy coming on and us making our final stand sacrificing ourselves knowing we're gonna die but just holding off the enemy Every guy's imagined that. Every guy can relate to Ord Mantell, if that's his name. So I'm gonna put him in C tier because that guy's living the dream. Every guy's had visions like that, so. All right, next up is General Grievous. And General Grievous is a, yeah, it's an Emperor Palpatine because General Grievous was a good character in Clone Wars. I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw him an A. He did deserve, he did get respect in his death. They treated him well. That's a solid A for me. Next up is this scum sucker. I can't even remember his name. It's the guy from Solo I know. Um, even I couldn't remember his name. I'm not, I don't remember how he died. Let me go find out. Guy from Solo Death. Solo Star Wars Story, Han shoots first. Okay, so let's just watch this. You're still paying attention because now I'm going to tell you the most important. <laughs> You're joking. That's insane. That's the stupidest thing I've ever heard in my entire life. Look, look, listen to his line. His line was written in some studio by some guy who's never even like watched a movie before. Who starts a sentence with, and now I'm going to tell you the most important... Just listen, just listen. I hope you're still paying attention because now I'm going to tell you the most important... <laughs> Who the frick talks like that? I hope you're still paying attention because now I'm going to tell you the most important thing... Frick that. And yes, don't, don't, please don't get me started on prequels dialogue. I know, I'm on your side. But that just seems like over the top excessively bad. I'm, because of that, honestly, because of that, I'm very tempted to put him, couldn't care less. So I'm going to. Plus, it doesn't really help that I couldn't physically remember his name. I, I had to look it up on YouTube with what I say, what I search, guy from Solo Death. That does not help his case very much. So he's going and couldn't care less in D tier. Next up is a genuine tragedy, and that is 99. 99 is going S tier, and everyone who's ever watched Clone Wars knows why. 99, defective clone. Everyone thought he was useless. Everyone looked down on him, but he did his duty. He stood tall, he stood strong, and he fought till the end. He wanted to serve his brothers, wanted to help them, and he needed to find loyalty in the Clone Wars TV show. 99, S tier all day, my friend. See you in Valhalla. 
Shmi! Shmi Skywalker. Shmi Skywalker is an uh, okay death. Because you kind of knew she was going to die. She kind of has to to give Anakin the emotional tension he needs. Um, so yeah, I'm putting her in uh, okay. It was kind of weird because they didn't really talk about her. And then all of a sudden, Anakin's just there. And she's dying on this like wooden cross thing. So that was kind of weirdly done in my opinion. But uh, I'll see tier. Uh, okay. Heavy. Heavy is another, another S tier. Boys, I'm a sucker for self-sacrifice. Look at this. Just look at this list. So many of these guys sacrifice themselves for a cause greater than themselves. And Heavy is no exception. Heavy was another 99 character who did his duty. And everyone loves that. So, S tier. Real men cried. Darth Maul from Phantom Menace. Darth Maul from Phantom Menace is kind of an uh okay. I gotta be honest. And the only reason I'm saying that is because there's also a Darth Maul from like Clone Wars Rebels at the end of this list. That's why I'm saying that. Because in Phantom Menace, Look, he was so cool. Ray Park, choreography, double weight lightsaber, all of it was sick. I was a big fanboy, believe me. Believe me, when he does the when he does the little thing, that was sick. That was sick. Anyone would say that. But, 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 he was not that great of a character and his death wasn't that emotional because he was underused. He had what, 30 words in the entire movie and a cool fight? Phantom Menace Darth Maul is an easy C tier. Uh, okay. Actually, you know what? I'll move him to Matt because he was better than these two. He was better than Kylo Ren and Han Solo. Pong Krell. Pong Krell was one of those guys that you love to hate. He was, honestly, I'm throwing my boy up there in A for villainy. Up with the other two big villains of the Star Wars so far. Pong Krell was really cool in the sense that he was awful. Everyone hated him and you were supposed to hate him. He was despicable. But he had a great arc as a character and his death was very well done. The whole fight with the clones leading him, leading him through the weird night jungle. That was sick. So I'm putting him up there in A. Pre Vizsla. Pre Vizsla is A tier. Pre Vizsla, look boys, this might be a little unpopular. Pre Vizsla was kind of right in some way. Look. I'm not defending Death Watch, but pre Vizsla was kind of right. Mandalore had gotten weak. Mandalore was able to be pushed over by anyone who got in their way. And pre Vizsla saw that, and look, maybe he was a little extreme. I'll give you that. But he knew what he wanted. He knew how to make Mandalore strong again, and he implemented his system in one of the best ways possible. He tried his best. Also, his final words, absolutely sick. There ain't no man out there who watched that and didn't have respect for the guy. That was, that's a good way to go out. He met a warrior's end. Like you said, only the strongest. Kiati Mundi. Okay, so I think there's a bunch of Jedi on this list who only appear basically in their Order 66 deaths. We have Kiati Mundi, Ayla Sakura, um, Plo Koon. Anyone else? Anyone else? Is that it? I think that's it. Okay, Kiati Mundi of the Order 66 deaths, Kiati Mundi is the one I feel the least empathy for because I have the least connection with him. Kiati Mundi is going in C, uh, okay, because I just, I don't really care about him that much. Plo Koon is going in A sad because through Clone Wars, Plo Koon was actually developed into a real character. And it was sad when he died. It was sad when he, his clones turned on him and they shot him down over, I can't remember which planet. Again, you commenters will know which planet. Another great thing to comment on and double the comments to views on this video. I haven't forgotten about that and you shouldn't either. Ayla Sakura is also really sad. And here's why. I watched a YouTuber called The Closer Look who does a lot of great videos. I really recommend you check him out. And he talked about this, about why Order 66 is one of the saddest scenes in Star Wars. And in it, he mentioned that Ayla Sakura, when she's getting shot, when she's on Felucia, I know that planet, and the clones are behind her and they're getting ready to open fire. When they first raise their guns to point it at her, she looks ahead of her. She has no idea what's happening. She thinks they're going to shoot an enemy ahead of them. She has so much faith in them that when they raise their guns and point it at her back, she doesn't even notice. She thinks they see a surprise attack that she does it. She thinks they're looking out for her. And, and then when they do start shooting, she doesn't fight. She raises her hands and surrender, but it doesn't matter. That was sad. Real men didn't cry, but that was sad. Greedo is next and <laughs> Greedo, Greedo's going couldn't care less, D tier. Here's why. Greedo only exists for one purpose, to show that Han Solo was in immense debt to Jabba the Hutt. That's the only reason. There's only one reason and that was it. And Greedo, terrible bounty hunter. If you're a bounty hunter and your target gets to jump on you by playing with a wall and distracting you so he can get his gun out, you know it's over for you. You know you're not going anywhere. Your career is over, buddy. Kiss it goodbye. So Greedo's going D tier. Ben Kenobi. Ben Kenobi, here's the thing. Ben Kenobi's death was done so well, and he doesn't really die in the sense that he has a force ghost, so I'm gonna put him A tier. If he had died permanently and it was meant to be a little sadder, I'd put him S tier, but he did it so well. The actual fight with Darth Vader, it, it helps that he surrenders himself. That's one of the key components. If Darth Vader had killed him, behind, like stabbed him in the back or something, that would have been sad. But he surrenders himself so they can escape, and he can guide Luke through the force. Jabba the Hutt. Oh, this, boys, <laughs> boy, boys. Someone's chopping onions right now. This is S tier. <laughs> job of the Hut. Yeah, freaking job of the Hut. Job of the Hut's, uh, okay. Andor, okay, Andor, and where's Jin? Andor, Jin, and Shira are all kind of the same tier because Rogue One is a movie about self-sacrifice and fighting for what you believe, even giving up your own life. So I'm gonna put all of them in sad. That was a sad movie. I remember being blown away 
when I was watching them in theaters get shot. When the Death Star hits the planet and they're sitting on the beach and the wave of fire is coming towards them, that's sad. That really is. And it really catches you off guard. You're not expecting that from a Star Wars movie. Shirit Chira also kind of same scenario. He was just trying to help them. He did help them actually. He connected the thing and then he got blown to bits. But it was sad because Chira was a cool character. <laughs> Chira was funny as frick, man. I miss that guy. Are you kidding me? I'm blind. Padme Amidala. Padme is a sad. Padme is an A tier sad because, well, here's the thing actually. No, she's B. I'm putting her in B. You wanna know freaking why? Because she had no right to die. She's in a top tier medical establishment on some random asteroid in the middle of bum frick nowhere. And she's like in perfect health, nothing wrong with her. She's lost the will to live. The frick does that supposed to mean? Medical droid, fix her up. Get her back to health. You can't will yourself to die. I don't care how sad you are. You got two twins that need you. Frick's wrong with you, honestly. B tier. Only because she was so weak-willed. That that's, my, that's my issue with the whole predicament. Yoda. Yoda would be sad, except he's almost exactly like Obi-Wan Kenobi. He's in the same boat because when Yoda died, it was for a greater purpose, and he was a force ghost. He stayed on to help. A tier is a good spot for both of these characters. I think they were done. I think their deaths were done very well. Mace Windu. Mace Windu is going A tier. A tier, I was going to put him in B, but I think A tier just because of one thing. In the Revenge of the Sith novelization, it is revealed that Mace Windu was going to appoint Anakin as a Jedi Master. Jedi Master after they defeated Sidious together. And that is a true, <laughs> a true reflection on the meme, honestly, of the, uh, you are on this council, but we do not grant you the rank of Master. That's a true, true insider knowledge. And because of that, it's sad that he died. I'm going to put him A. I'm going to put him A tier. Also, Samuel L. Jackson. Everyone's sad when Samuel L. Jackson leaves the movie. It's just, you know, it's going to go downhill from there. <laughs> Alright, these next three are all the ones who confronted Sidious with Mace Windu in Palpatine's office. Kit Fisto, Stacey Tin, and Agent Kolar. These two, Stacey Tin and Agent Kolar, couldn't care less. Honestly, if you're going to put up that little of a fight against Palpatine as Jedi Masters, I mean, both these guys are on the Jedi Council. They're both proficient in their areas of expertise. If you're going to put up that little of a fight, you deserve death. Honestly, I, I look, I'm just saying, look, don't hate the player, hate the game. If you're going to play the game that badly, where you get impaled a lightsaber on the first time he swings, you freaking deserve it. Don't, don't come whining to me. D tier, couldn't care less. Kit Fisto, C tier. Because Kit Fisto blocked one hit from Palpatine. That one hit he blocked saved his reputation in my book. C tier. All right, next up is Tech. How does Omega say it? Tech, tick, tick. I freaking hate Omega so much. Honestly, I can't stand her. Tech, all right, boys, time to level with you. I have watched Bad Batch Season 2. I have, I promise you. But I did kind of trail off towards the end, and I kind of lost focus when Tech died, so I don't really remember his death that well. But I do remember he fell to his death from that thing, and Tech was a cool character of the Bad Batch. He's going up there with Padme, Maul, and Yaddle. The Grand Inquisitor. The Grand Inquisitor is going C tier because he has sick final words. His final words were really cool and a really good reflection on uh, the power of the dark side and pissing off the wrong people. There are some things far more frightening than death. So C tier. Uh, okay, that's where I'm going to put him. Plus, I hate his lightsaber, so he loses, as a character, he loses a little bit of points in my book. Kanan Jarrus. Okay, again, anyone who's watched the channel, boys, Jedwardians out there, you know I haven't watched Rebel Seasons 3 and 4. I'm going to, I promise, but I haven't yet. But I have seen Kanan Jarrus' death scene. There was some sick music in the back room, some really emotional music swelling over it. He's doing one of these. He's holding back Hera, and he's also holding back the fire. And it's a sick moment of self-sacrifice. His vision returns. Boys, without watching, without having watched Rebel Season 3 and 4, I'm putting him in S. That's how you know it's a good death. When I cried without having watched the show and having not knowing him as a character that well, when I, you know, I didn't actually cry. But when I cry, real men cry, you know that you've done it right. Because I wasn't even that attached. I haven't watched all Rebels. And I still thought it was super sad and super heroic of him. So S, real men cried. Darth Maul from the Clone Wars and Rebels. Darth Maul, honestly, real men cried. Honestly, what, I saw some YouTube comment about this. I think he was in the top comment of the Maul tribute video with like 10 million views. The top comment said something along these lines. It was, the sad part of Maul's death is realizing that he never actually hated Obi-Wan. He never actually hated the Jedi. He hated Palpatine. But since he couldn't get to Palpatine, he settled for less. He thought that this would make him happy. He thought pursuing these people who he thought had harmed him would make him happy and satisfy his need for revenge, but it didn't. All it did was make it worse. And also, I do know that you boys really like Darth Maul because in my video where I asked you guys to fill out my Google form test and I reacted to it, you guys said Darth Maul was one of your favorite Sith. Go watch that video right now. I promise it's so good. You'll really like it. It's one of my favorite videos I've ever made. And thank you very much for watching this video and be sure to subscribe. Have a good one, guys. Bye. See you later. See ya. Bye.